This is a contactor box from a BMW i3. They were made from approximately 2014 to 2021, at least here in the States. And I bought this box to see what's inside. And I'm also curious to see if this can be CAN bus controlled, like the safety boxes out of the BMW hybrids, the 330E, 530E, 740E, X5s. Now those cars, like I stated, are hybrid where this is fully electric. So I wonder if it's the same type of firmware or code or if it's something different. But first, I want to open this up and just see what's inside. Figure, figure I show you what I'm talking about. So here is a similar S-Box safety box. So these are contactor boxes, but BMW calls them safety boxes, and we call them S-Boxes for short. I have a number of videos on how to open this one up pull the guts out of it, see what's inside of it. I explain what they do. And I also show you how we can control it using Damien McGuire's code. He reinverse engineered this box. Uh, perhaps he had some help from folks on Open Inverter. But we're going to take that same code and see if we can interrogate this box. I think I'm actually going to use the zombie. So let me bring that out to show you what's, what I'm planning on doing. So this here is a circuit board called the Zombie VCU, Vehicle Control Unit. It's also designed by Damian McGuire, again, with the help of other folks from Open Inverter. And it can control the S-Box, this one from the hybrids. And we're going to use this um, same controller to see if we can control the safety box out of the BMW i3. Now, what I mean by controlling? Well, by controlling, I mean closing and opening the contactors, the main contactor, the positive contactor, and the negative contactor, as well as running the pre-charge circuit, and also getting some readings of uh, amps of current and volts, because these boxes have current shunts or current sensors in them, be it Hall effect or actual sh shunts. So, like I said, I want to open this box up, take you along for the ride with me. Hopefully we can see what's inside there. Straight away, I can see that what's on top here may be a, another black box, which I believe may be a uh, master BMS module, battery management system module. The way I've seen these BMWs set up, and a lot of vehicles do this, is that there are slave boards that then report to a master circuit board. Sometimes a lot of the boards are called satellites, but there's little modules on each battery, and then they talk to this box. Okay, well, why not? Just for funsies, I brought out one of the eight, I believe, modules that live in the big battery pack that makes up this BMW i3 big battery pack I should say and I couldn't afford the whole pack I wish I could have they come in three different sizes so there's the 20 kilowatt hour or maybe like 22 kilowatt hour there's one that is 33 kilowatt hours and there's the one that's 42 if you're considering getting a battery pack I would recommend nothing smaller than 30 kilowatt hours. Maybe you can go as low as 24 kilowatt hours. And the reason for that is that's where the electric, 100% electric car started. The Nissan Leaf has a, had a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack when it came out with a range of about 86 miles. That's pretty fair. And then the, now the BMW i5 has a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack. That is a hybrid, but that's kind of the base, the bare minimum where you should uh, consider starting. And yes, I'm a hypocrite because I was running my truck on nine kilowatt hours. Then I thought about upgrading it to 12, but I actually jumped to 24. And now I know a little bit more about stuff. So I am recommending 30. 30 is the magic number because if we use the formula of 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, 30, kilowatt battery packs will give us about 100 mile range. Okay, enough rambling. 
I'm going to put this module aside. We'll probably use this later when we're trying to get some current out of this through this uh, contactor box. But for now, I'm going to move this aside. I just kind of wanted to give you an overview. And we're going to start tearing into this one here. This may end up being a two-part video where the first video is just on the hardware, kind of seeing what's inside this box. So I don't lose you guys, you know, two and a half hours in into this video. And then maybe I'll do a second video where actually it's more software based, where we're actually trying to interrogate this uh, contactor box and see if we can open and close them contact. Well, I found the slave BMS board that attaches somewhere to this module. I think it may have been in here, something to this effect. Anyway, I found it, so I figure I share it with you guys. So this module talks to this one. Uh, they're not, you know, wireless. Obviously, these wires have been cut. What I'm going to do now is unbolt this, unscrew it. Of course, it's not Phillips. Am I prepared for that? No. Am I checking my kitchen pantry for a Torx screwdriver? Maybe. What do you keep in your pantry? Okay, but it's too, too small. Let me go get a proper size one. Okay, why would BMW use a Phillips screwdriver when they can use something else? All right. Notice the increased production value. We are using green screen as our table cover so that you guys can see the contrast. How does this come out? All right. So orange means probably DC high voltage. So this pops out nicely. How many connectors are there? There's four on this bad boy. Okay, so I'm not sure why I did that one because this guy is just attached on here. Yep, with one of those super duper clips. Of course, I need pliers to get it out. I'm going to try to keep as much stuff together as I can. So maybe there's an unlikely event. I know how it goes back together. So let's play a fun game of keep track of how many different tools I need to use to take this thing apart. The wrong Phillips doesn't count. Uh, why do I care? Oh, geez. So you know I'll be cutting this with a propane torch if the camera wasn't rolling. Come on, get out. Okay. So there's a pigtail on this one. I may never use this BMS, but at least I have a pigtail for it, so I'm going to keep it together. This the way you went? If so, why aren't you going in there? This is going to be a long video. I can't even put this back in there. How the heck? Okay. All right. So that master BMS, which I think it is a master BMS, talks to these boards. So be it. What we care about is that. So let me clear the table so we can just focus on this box. Okay, with the BMS board removed, now we're going to try to pop this thing open. Not sure if you guys can see because this is black on black, but these appear to be contactors. And they sort of live on the outskirts of the box here. I'm not going to undo these screws because I'm sure they're tethered by some sort of a electrical connectors. This looks like a pre-charge relay right there. So it's kind of opened. But this plastic box lives inside of the battery pack box case. So that's why it's designed the way it is. Anyway, let me see if I can pop these open. There's only one, two. I'm undoing these 
clips, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So I thought I was going to need eight hands BMW style, but oh, I done did it. Okay. These will just come out. Are, are there zip ties here? Yep, there are zip ties. Oh boy. Tell me I have snips in here. What kind of pantry is this? All right, I found my snips. I think that puts us at three tools already. My favorite zip ties one and two. Okay. Come on. Seriously? Okay. So here it is. We have the lid off of it. And straight away, I don't know if you guys I don't know if you guys can see it or recognize it, but doesn't that look like a turbo and cabulator? Mm-hmm. So fairly simple design so far. And I have yet to see a circus board, so let's see here. There, this is a plug. Is this the output? I wonder if this is the output. This probably connects to the battery module. And then this one. Hmm. I'm going to take some pictures of this so I know how things go back if and if we decide to put things back. I swear I did see a circus board in there. There is one in the back here underneath. I wonder how we get to that. We have is everything buried in there? And has anyone done else done a video on this? And I'm going to be looking silly, not know, and not know what these components are. Of course, I don't know why I'm cutting these, but okay. So we can see bus bars here. This is a bus bar. It goes to that end on the contactor. It goes to here and it goes to that, which I, I think that's output. Or is it? I don't know. Fuse and the fuse will probably talk to the positive contactor and it goes through it and down there. I think the shunt might be down there. The bottom one. Oh, this is the precharge relay. Okay, so the positive contactor is right here. I tried connecting this plug to the battery and it did want to clip on. That's why I was saying that this might be the end. Okay, I think I think you would want to go through the fuse before you come out here. So it would have to go like that and out. I still think this is the output. I should really look this up, but I'm too lazy, so I'm just guessing. I'm going to just keep digging. Oh, here's a circuit board right here. Duh. But I think there's another one right here how do we get more of this out hmm so this right here this here is our low uh, low voltage controls and I wonder if they how much they differ from the ones from the S box for the 330 I think I might do a change of plans and rather tearing this completely apart 
I'm going to move on to the software first, figure out what the pins are, figure out which one of these are CAN, which was like power, positive, negative. I'll do that so that if I, if I take it apart and I can't put it back together, then I'm screwed. But if I try to control it before messing with it too much, then we have a chance of the contactors clicking. So let me try to do that. Let me see if I can find out, pin out for this. I'll probably unwind this tape. And what we want to do is, there's going to be some clues. Like we'll probably find two wires wound up together. And that's a sign that that's can. Okay, so we can see there's some of the clues. How many are there? Okay, there's. Couple twisties, okay. I thought there would be a pair, but there's a couple twisty pairs, so that doesn't help me. Okay, this might be the extent of my reverse engineering prowls. There's a purple wire, there's an orange wire, and then there's four pairs of twisted wire, okay. And sometimes when we see wires twisted, we can guess or assume that that's CAN bus. Well, there's four of these to pick from. And so maybe there's different controls on different circuit boards for different things. So I'm going to look, try to find a schematic on this and find out what's what and see if we can talk to this guy.